Good evening. We would like to welcome you to our event tonight, first of, uh, part of our uh, 2020 homecoming. Uh, most unusual, is it not, not to be sitting in the bleachers watching the ball game. Uh, this will be the first time in our school's history in which this uh, event has not been in our gymnasium. But we want to say thank you for coming. And then we almost had to postpone it, didn't we, because of weather. But the uh, temperature, I think, is going to be kind to us and at least let us get home. But I'm glad you were able to join us tonight. Um, if you have friends or loved ones that wish they could have been here, we are actually live streaming it right now. So you'll not offend me if you pull your phone out and text them to go to beaconbaptist.org slash live. That's our church website, beaconbaptist.org. And if you'll tell them to go to the uh, live or uh, stream the service, they can watch this event. They can also go to our school's Facebook page, uh, Raleigh Christian Academy. But it is good to have you here tonight. In thinking about our theme, uh, you can see that um, on our screens earlier, we had a verse of scripture. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, uh, the book of Ecclesiastes was written by what most people would attest to, the wisest, men that, the wisest man that ever lived. King Solomon was one of the most revered kings of Israel. Um, if you were to ask uh, Jews today who was the, the, the most remembered, they would probably say David. Uh, because of his great and mighty acts of war. Uh, but if you were asked them about uh, knowledge and wisdom, uh, we would very quickly say Solomon. But most of the time when we think of Solomon, we think of the book that he wrote. He wrote the book of Proverbs. And, and maybe you um, prescribe to a proverb a day that might be emailed to you. I did that several years ago. Or maybe if you're a Christian, you know that there are 31 chapters in Proverbs, and maybe you try to read some of each one uh, each day of the month. Uh, but Proverbs is a book of wisdom, but tonight we're going to look at a less popular book uh, that Solomon wrote, and it is the book of Ecclesiastes, almost his biography. You know, this past year and the school year that we're in right now have been most unusual. And I believe you would say that literally the last 10 months have put us in a place where we thought we'd never be. It's put our community in a place we thought it'd never be. And really our world in a place we thought it would never be. To be honest with you, several months ago when we were in the summer and it looked like our, our virus numbers were going down and maybe they were going to completely go away, Numbers have really rapidly increased, haven't they, to the point where our hospitals are almost now at full capacity. If you're familiar with Samaritan's Purse, they're a Christian organization that's worldwide, and uh, they heard about some of the problems in one of the hospitals here in our state, and they're setting up a temporary hospital just to take care of the people. But I want to ask you a question. Have we completely stopped what we're doing. Now, boy, I tell you, back in the second week of March, I can tell you the date, March 13th, things drastically changed for me as a school administrator. I had to get my staff ready to go online pronto. Thankfully, the Lord superintended that, that it was the week prior to spring break, so we took that week off, and then we had spring break. So thankfully, our school had two weeks ready to get, uh, two weeks to get ready for most unusual happenings. But for a while there, we did seem like we stopped, didn't we? Things happen. But I tell you, we have been incredibly slowed down on many, many fronts. And for a while, I think, and definitely I believe some things have changed forever. You know, Ecclesiastes is a book that reminds us of some things. And in chapter 3, I want to read just a couple verses here. You probably have heard these verses before. And you've probably heard them in a song, I believe. I should have looked it up when it came out. But it came out, I believe, back in the early, maybe mid-70s. And um, I'm going to sing a little tune for you. And if you recognize it, when I get done, I want you to raise your hand and say, Yep, I've heard that before. 
To everything turn, turn, turn. Yep, there is a reason. Turn, turn, turn. I remember hearing that really not because I listened to it on the radio, but because I've heard it used in maybe a, a TV show, or maybe a movie, definitely a commercial. And I, I always thought, man, they're quoting the Bible. That song is just about the Bible, and it really is. Because when you get to the chorus and the bridge of the song, it says, a time to, a time to, a time to. Well, those words weren't original with the songwriter. They were original with a man, Solomon. And here's what he said. Verse 1 of chapter 3, To everything there is a season, and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. I thought about recent months and how that probably some of you have been months without maybe an embrace from a loved one or maybe a close friend. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. But you skip down to verse 11, our theme verse for tonight. It says, He hath made everything beautiful in His time. Also, He has set the world in their hearts so that no man can find out the work that God maketh from the beginning to the end. You know, we've gone through some unusual times this year. Maybe times of shouting where we were excited. I see that in verse 2, a time to be born. When I read that verse, I think about the birth of my two daughters and how that the second one in just a couple of minutes, I'll have the opportunity to walk down the aisle as a senior. It seems just like yesterday and time is gone. How about a time of sorrow in verse 4, a time to weep, a time to mourn. I believe we've all had those times this year. Our pastor who was supposed to close tonight is not here with us. He got word early this morning that his father who's in Alabama had a heart attack during the night, had to be rushed to the hospital, so he made arrangements to fly down there. Do you think he's had a time of mourning and a time of weeping today? I know many of us have had loved ones who have died in 2020, maybe even because of the virus. We know very easily what times of sorrow are. What about times of uncertainty? A time to plant. Say, Mr. Brother Williams, what are you talking about, time of uncertainty? Well, if you're a farmer you know that once you put that seed in the ground, it's not guaranteed that it's going to grow, is it? So you water, you fertilize, maybe you get the weeds out of there and pray that it grows. But then when it does, there is a time to pluck up that which is planted. But you know, out of all of these times, the one that I think about the most is what I call the times of certainty. Those things that will happen. Do you realize that every one of those times that I read tonight will happen or has happened or if it hasn't happened in your life, it will happen? All of those times are certain times. But you know our theme verse, it says, He hath made everything beautiful in His time. If I were to ask you tonight what the word beautiful means, you might give me a dictionary definition. If you were to ask a small child, they would say, oh, that's someone that's very, very pretty. Or maybe that's a beautifully landscaped picture that someone painted. But the word beautiful itself literally means to be brought together or to bring together in harmony. 
It's a musical term as in bringing together different instruments and creating a harmonious sound. Today we would call that a symphony. You know, God promises that everything that happens in our lives, everything from the mourning to the rejoicing, from the time of dying to the time of being born, from the time of war to the time of peace, the time of society turmoil to when things are going well. The Bible through God promises that everything will eventually be brought together to be harmonious at the perfect time that God will return. I believe that wholeheartedly that if I live long enough, I will die. But I also believe that once I die, there is eternity waiting for me in heaven with God my Father. In His time, everything will become beautiful. You know, we are getting ready to see representatives, your children, our students walk down this middle aisle. And their time is right now. And they don't know much about the times that we read about. But you know, as parents, aunts, uncles, friends, neighbors, grandmothers, grandfathers, it's our responsibility to teach them and to prepare them for those times. But we can't forget to tell them that one day God will use these times you're going through for your good and in His glory, in His time. If you would, bow your heads there just a moment. We're going to pray. But before I pray, let me ask you a question while you've had your heads bowed. It wouldn't be good for me tonight, being a Christian, not to ask you this question. Has there ever been a time in your life when you can honestly say, I bowed my head, I prayed, and I accepted Jesus as my Savior? Your child hears that quite often here at Raleigh Christian Academy. And we have parents in this room tonight, I believe that your child has accepted Christ as their Savior this school year. And for that, you should be very, very thankful. But maybe you've never done that. And I would encourage you, if you've never done that, there's a couple things that you could do. Number one, you could see me after this service and ceremony is over. And I'd take my Bible and I would show you from the Bible how Jesus can be your Savior. Number two, you could go to our church's website and click on the button, Find Out More About Salvation. And there you could read a testimony and be led in a prayer through a video about how to receive Christ as Savior. Or, if your child has gotten saved this year, it would honor us if you asked them, can you tell me how to accept Christ as Savior? And I believe that they could do that. The times in our lives are most unusual. But you know, they're much more comforting to go through when we have a Savior, Jesus Christ, to go through them with us. And I pray that you'll consider that if you've not become a Christian. Lord, we ask you to bless this ceremony now. And I pray that your name would be honored and glorified. Lord, each of these students are wonderful students. They're good examples. We believe that they're trying their best to do right. They're not perfect. But Lord, we thank the Lord for each and every one of them. We thank the Lord for their families that, that thought about Christian education enough to put them in a Christian school where they hear about Jesus, where they can learn what it means to go through good times and in bad times. Lord, I pray that you'll bless their families. Lord, I pray that you'll bless our community. Lord, more than that, I pray, Lord, you'll bless our country. We're going through some very horrible times right now. And Lord, we need you more than ever. Father, I pray that you'll heal our land. I pray that we'll turn from our wicked ways, that we will... Lord, love each other. I pray, Lord, that we'll know what it's like to have the true love of Christ for our neighbor. And Lord, I pray you'll heal our country. Lord, we thank you for this time that we have tonight. Thank you that we can honor these young people. 
And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We hope you enjoy the ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the 35th annual crowning of Raleigh Christian Academy's homecoming, King and Queen. We are honored that you have chosen to be with us on this very special occasion. Raleigh Christian Academy's homecoming is a spiritual event, and it is our desire to recognize students who seek to please the Lord. More importantly, we desire to honor Christ during this ceremony. In that spirit, please join us as we recognize some of Raleigh Christian Academy's finest students. Since we will be having professional pictures made following the ceremony, we ask that everyone please stay off the auditorium stage until the photographer has finished. The theme for this evening's ceremony is In His Time, taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 3 in verse 11. He hath made everything beautiful in his time. And now, Raleigh Christian Academy's 2021 homecoming king and queen candidates. First of all, the senior candidates, Mr. Tyler Robert Kinney. Tyler is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Aaron Kinney. In his life, verses from John 15 and verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Tyler has attended RCA since K-4 and plans to attend Wake Technical Community College to study accounting. A senior class king candidate, Mr. Tyler Robert Kinney. Our first senior queen candidate, Miss Anna Danielle Roberts. Danielle is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Jason Roberts. In her life verse is from Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. In the life which now I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Danielle has been a student at RCA since kindergarten, and upon graduation plans to attend the Crown College to study pre-med. Escorting Daniel tonight is her father, Mr. Jason Roberts, a senior class queen candidate, Miss Anna Danielle Roberts. Our second senior king candidate is Mr. David Jaywin Goway. David is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Jason Goway. In David's life, verses from Psalm 118, verse 17. He delivered me from my strong enemy and from them which hated me, for they were too strong for me. David has been a student at RCA since the eighth grade and plans to study pastoral theology at West Coast Baptist College. A senior class king candidate, Mr. Day David Jaywin Goway. Our second queen candidate, Miss Allison Page Williams. Allison is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Timothy Williams, and Allison has chosen for her life verse Isaiah 26, 3 and 4. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Allison has attended RCA since K-1, and she plans to study elementary education and piano at West Coast Baptist College. Escorting Allison tonight is her father, Mr. Timothy Williams. Our second senior class queen candidate, Miss Allison Page Williams. Chosen from the 11th grade, Mr. Eric Blaine Reitzel. Eric is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Matt Reitzel. Eric has attended RCA since K-3, in his life, verse is from Jonah 2, verse 9. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I will pay that uh, which I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. A junior class king candidate, Mr. Eric Blaine Reitzel. A queen candidate from the junior class, Miss Rihanna Denise Thompson. Rihanna is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Les Kawanya Thompson, 
and has chosen for her life verse, Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are the called according to his purpose. Rihanna has been at RCA students since K-5. And escorting Rihanna tonight is her father, Mr. Les Thompson, a junior class queen candidate, Miss Rihanna Denise Thompson. Our second junior king candidate, Mr. Brian Keith Phillips. Brian is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Charles in Mimi Phillips and has been a student at RCA since K-4. Brian's favorite verse is from Philippians 4 in verse 19. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. A junior class king candidate, Mr. Brian Keith Phillips. Our second queen candidate from the junior class, Miss Peyton Ansley Brooks. Ainsley is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Michael Brooks, and she has chosen 2 Corinthians 3, 5 for her life verse. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything of as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Ansley has been a student at RCA since K-5, and she is escorted by her father, Mr. Michael Brooks, Jr., a junior class queen candidate, Miss Peyton Ansley Brooks. Representing the sophomore class, Mr. Benjamin Carlisle Pierce. Benjamin is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Robert Pierce, and he has been a student at RCA since K-4. Benjamin's favorite verse is 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. The sophomore class king candidate, Mr. Benjamin Carlisle Pierce. The sophomore queen candidate, Miss Catherine Marie Roberts. Katie is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Jason Roberts. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 are her favorite verses. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Katie has been a RCA student since K-5 and is escorted tonight by her father, Mr. Jason Roberts. The sophomore, sophomore class queen candidate, Miss Catherine Marie Roberts. The freshman class representatives, Mr. Ricardo Garcia Adorno. Ricardo is the son of Mrs. Adorno and Mr. Rivera and he has been a student at RCA for one year. Ricardo's favorite verse is 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Watch ye, stand fast in the faith, quit ye like men, be strong. The freshman class king candidate, Mr. Ricardo Garcia Adorno. The queen candidate from the freshman class, Miss Emily Sofia Guerrero Quinones. Emily is the daughter of Mr. Go, uh, go, go with me, sorry about that, uh, Guerrero and Miss Claudia Quinones. And her favorite verse is from Romans 12 in verse 15. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. Emily has been a student at RCA since fifth grade. And her escort for the evening is her father, Gume Guerrero. The freshman class queen representative, Miss Emily Sofia Guerrero Quinones. And now, for the middle school prince and princesses representatives. The eighth grade prince representative, Mr. Johnny Joel or Joel Mendoza. Johnny is the son of Mr. Valentin Montalongo and Miss Nancy Montalongo. And his life verse is from Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. The prince representative from the eighth grade, Mr. Johnny Joel Mendoza. The representative selected from the seventh grade, a princess representative, Miss Rachel Wilson Cunningham. Rachel is the daughter of Mr. and Miss Chris Cunningham. Rachel's life verse is Hebrews 13 in verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness, and be content with such things as ye have. For he has said, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. 
The princess representative selected by the seventh grade, Miss Rachel Wilson Cunningham. A prince representative, Mr. Ethan John Davis. Ethan is the son of Mr. and Mrs. John Davis. And his chosen verse is Ephesians 4 in verse 32. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. A prince representative from the seventh grade, Mr. Ethan John Davis. The princess representative from the sixth grade, Miss, Ol Miss Olivia Anna Capuni. Olivia is the daughter of Mr. Frank Capuni and Miss Fifi Capuni and has selected John 3.16 for her life verse, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Our sixth grade princess representative, Miss Olivia Anna Capuni. The sixth grade class has chosen Mr. Ethan Simsimen Manuel. Ethan is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Eduardo Manuel, and Ethan's life verse is from Psalm 56 in verse 3. What time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. A sixth grade prince representative, Mr. Ethan Simsimen Manuel. We now present to you Raleigh Christian Academy's homecoming court representatives from kindergarten and elementary. Both the young ladies and the young men were selected by their classmates to represent their grade in the homecoming court as princesses and princess, and are esteemed as students with character and a love for the Lord. Selected by the fifth grade, Carson Aubrey McFarland and Kobe Lamont Barnhill. Carson is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Roderick McFarland, and her favorite Bible verse is from Joshua 1.9. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Kobe is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Keith Barnhill. Kobe has chosen Exodus 20 in verse 12. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Good verse. An elementary princess and prince from the fifth grade, Carson Aubrey McFarlane and Kobe Lamont Barnhill. The representatives for the fourth grade, Diana Laura Jimenez and Ruben Laster. Diana is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Jose Laura. Her favorite Bible verse is John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Reuben is the son of Mr. Antony Laster and Miss Irina Laster. And his favorite verse is from Philippians 4.3, I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. The princess and prince representative chosen by the fourth grade, Diana Laura Jimenez and Reuben Laster. The representatives from the third grade, Jada Jean Marie Hill and Owen Andrew Rabin. Jada is a daughter of Miss Jalisa Hill. Jada's favorite Bible verse is from John 3:16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Owen is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Philip Rabin. Owen's chosen verse is from John 3.16 as well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. The princess and prince representing the third grade, Jada Jean Marie Hill and Owen Andrew Rabin. Representing the second grade, Raquel Caroline Iona Valencia, and J.D.L. Tavris. Raquel is the daughter of Mr. Sergio Lopez and Miss Augustina Valencia. Luke 137 is her favorite Bible verse, for with God nothing shall be impossible. J.D.L. is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Kelvin Tavires. 
JDL's chosen verse is from Revelation 22, 19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and out of the holy city, and from the things which are written in this book. The elementary princess and prince representatives from the second grade, Raquel, Caroline, Ion, Valencia, and JDL, Havris. Representing the first grade, Riona Laster and Gabriel Oscar Arohu. Riona is the daughter of Mr. An Antony Laster and Miss Irina Laster. And she has chosen Philippians 4.13 as her favorite verse. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Gabriel is the son of Mr. and Mrs. Jose Arahu, and Psalm 34, 8 is his favorite verse. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good, blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Our first grade princess and prince representatives, Riona Laster and Gabriel Oscar Arahu. Representing the kindergarten, Isabella Grace Harris and Wyatt S. Kokali. Isabella is the daughter of Mr. and Mrs. Mark Harris. Her favorite Bible verse is from John 14 and verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Wyatt is the son of Mr. George Kokali and Miss Melissa Starvelis. Wyatt's chosen verse is John 14:14. 14, 14. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. The kindergarten princess and prince representatives, Isabella Grace Harris and Wyatt S. Kirkcalley. Let's give one more round of applause for this year's 2021 homecoming <laughs> representatives. And now it is time for the highlight of the evening, the crowning of the king and the queen. Our students in ninth through 12th grades voted for the king and queen, and their votes were cast on the basis of these five qualifications. The king and queen should be a good spiritual leader. They should provide good examples for others to follow. They must be kind to others. They must seek to do God's will in his or her life. They must show a love for RCA and possess school spirit. We believe the lives of the young man and young lady who have been selected exemplify these qualifications, and we are proud to honor each of them this evening. Assisting with the crowning of the king will be the 2019-20 school year reigning king, Mr. Luke Mark Jimenez. Luke is the son of Mr. and Miss Felix Jimenez and has been a student at RCA since 10th grade. Luke's favorite verses are from Titus 2, 11 and 12. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live sober, soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. Luke is a senior at RCA and plans to attend West Coast Baptist College to study pastoral theology. Our reigning king, Mr. Luke Mark Jimenez. Assisting with the crowning of the queen will be our seventh grade representative, Miss Rachel Wilson Cunningham. And now. Our 2021 homecoming king is Mr. David Goway. <laughs> now at this time, Raleigh Christian Academy proudly presents to you the 2021 Homecoming Queen.
Miss Allison Page Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the 2021 Raleigh Christian Academy Homecoming King and Queen and their court. Oh, they look great. And now our school administrator, Timothy Williams, will come, close us in prayer, and I'll be back for just a few final instructions. For many years, our pastor's done this, and I deeply regret, and I know he does, that he couldn't be here. He texted me just a few moments ago and said that he would be watching if he could, and that he'd be remembering us in prayer, and I hope that you'll do that before uh, you lay down tonight and say a special prayer for his father. His father's name is David. Pray for Brother David Rabin. But if he were here, he'd say, look how beautiful all these young people are. I've heard him say it for many years. And he would say, you have a lot to be proud of. And you really do. We have many, many wonderful students at our school. But I'll be honest with you, these are some of the best of the best. And I'm proud of each and every one of them. But I want to say a heartfelt thank you for what you do at home. Because these young people are who they are because we've teamed up with you. We never want to take your place as a mom and dad. We want to help you. And every time we reach out a communication, maybe a phone call that's a little awkward or maybe it's that email that you get that you hope that you don't get. I met a parent the other day in the hallway and she, she looked a little anxious and I said, can I help you? And she said, well, Mr. Williams, I've had to sit outside the classroom door just to make sure so-and-so behaves and does what he's supposed to in the class. And I say, I know exactly what you mean. I've been there before. Sometimes it's awkward, but I assure you, our heart is to completely help you to strengthen your family. So let me say thank you. May we be reminded that tonight, everything is beautiful in His time. Let's pray and then I'll let Brother Eric close us. Dear Lord, thank you for the opportunity you've given us to honor these students and to honor their families. And we thank you for what they do for RCA. Because we could not have a school without students. And Lord, we could not have good communities without good students and good families. And Lord, that's just our heart. I hope that these students, once they get done, their years of schooling will go out and do great things for you. I think about these seniors that are on the stage behind me, and I think about the potential they have. But I think about how nervous some of them are about graduating, going on to college, and literally starting their life. But Lord, I know that they're ready. I know what they've heard in the classrooms. I'm sure what they've heard at home complements what we've tried to do here at school. But Lord, for all these students, I pray that they will serve you every day of their life. And I pray that their parents will do all they can to keep themselves dedicated to the Lord so that they can lead their families. Thank you for a wonderful evening. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Eric. Let's give the court a round of applause one more time tonight. <clears throat> You guys did great. Just three quick reminders before we leave this evening. This evening, we ask that everyone uh, to please uh, stay off the auditorium stage until the our professional photographer up front is finished. He would appreciate that greatly. Also tonight, it is our desire to keep folks as safe as possible during this time. And so, as you dismiss this evening, if you would head toward the outside aisle. So if you're in this aisle, go this way, this aisle there, and so forth. Just our best way to try and keep uh, everyone as, uh, as you know, best as possible.
One final thing, uh, if you are planning to come forward and obviously take a lot of pictures, we in, encourage you to. Feel free just to stay seated until everyone else has cleared out and then make your way, way forward. And young folks, hang tight right up here and get ready to smile a lot. All right? All right. Well, God bless you all. Thank you all so much for coming this evening. We are dismissed.